Alrighty, so a little while ago was my birthday. My parents got me a bunch of mixed packed beers, mixed packs, mixed packs of beer. Yep, mixed packs of beers, uh, which is always always awesome. So thank you, mom and dad. Um, but yes, we got some stuff from Cowbell. Two beers in the mixed pack. Haven't had before. The other three were just general Cowbell beers, but these two are, are pretty special, and we got one of them today. I'm going to be kind of comparing it, just in my mind, between the version that I did and, well, the pro version of, uh, of, of this style of beer. So I'm pretty excited. So without further ado, let's just, let's just get into it and drink some damn beer, shall we? Beer, 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 ba beer, ba beer, beer, beer. Hello everybody, welcome back to me, Mate Brewski from the Rooski Brewski Review. And today the beer that I have for you guys is by the Cowbell Brewing Company out in Blythe, Ontario, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, Blythe, Ontario. We have their Kvyk Pale Ale. Like I said before, I've, uh, I'm going to be comparing this, per se, to, um, to one of my home brews, actually. I did a Kvyk Pale Ale. Uh, turned out, you know, fairly decent. Actually, pretty pretty well in my opinion, but I want to see how the pros do it. I know I did a Kvike from uh, Township 24 out in Chestermere, Alberta uh, a little while back as well. Um, that one was pretty good, but not as flavor intense as uh, the flavor intensity as mine. So let's see what Cowbell has to do. I, 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 would, I, would, I wouldn't doubt that they did a hell of a lot better job than I did, but we're still going to try it out. This bad boy right here is coming in at 4% ABV, so very comparable to what I got. I think mine was about 3.9 or, f yeah, 3.9%, so very comparable in that regard. Uh, 20 IBUs, I think mine was a little bit higher. Really cool black can on here. It's part of the Renegade series. Boom, pretty badass looking uh, uh, styling of font there. But yeah, 4%, 20 IBUs. Let's crack this bad boy open. Let's see what we got. Whoa. And it's going to do that. I looked at the top of the can to see the, uh, the, 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 the top portion, it seemed bulging. And then, yep, that's, uh, that's what happened. So, we got that going on. Not a big, big issue, at least no beer spilt out of here. Got a little Royal City uh, beer glass here, because I've been using it to try out my new homebrew, which is almost ready, and that's gonna have a bunch of head on there. Okie dokie dokes, that's a fun time. When was this brewed? Uh, canned on that eight or nine nine ooh September 23rd 2020 so a little older for sure and a lot of head on that particular pour and it wasn't an aggressive pour by any means let's see if we can just do it baby steps very tiny baby steps get a little bit more beer in here without getting too much head but it seems to me that we're getting a hell of a lot more head uh, then, uh, <laughs> then, then we would want to. Uh, this is, oh geez, maybe only a quarter of the beer in here. And uh, looking at it, it's it's mostly uh, frothy, frothy head with uh, a very nice golden, not yeah, like yellowy golden, hazy uh, kind of beer under there. Pretty cool. I'm gonna wait till this head dies down a bit, because this is just, um, oh, it's a little too aggressive of a uh, of a head there. But seeing how it went. I mean, you know, started to uh, spill out a little bit. Um, maybe a little worried, but not too much, to be honest. Again, it is a little bit older of a can, um, but thinking it's, what, February 5th as of recording. This was done in September, so that's, what, October, November, December, January. That's only about four months uh, uh, on average, maybe just a touch over or whatever, but only four months. I wouldn't expect that to happen, but, hey, you know what? It does sometimes, so... Not too, too bad. Can we get a nose off of it? Not really, not yet per se. What about in the can? Again, not really any nose there. So we're gonna let it sit for a minute and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll dive back into this when the uh, head starts to, you know, cooperate a bit more. So now that we've waited a bit, the head's dissipated with very large bubbly bubbles as you can kind of see without me pouring beer out of my glass. Very interesting dissipation of bubbles but still a very beautiful color hazy golden yellow I like it let's have a smell smell in the notes here you know typical uh, grapefruit pine moving into a bit like a tropical ooh nectar 
nectarine, mangoes, papaya and passion fruit, I want to say, but... Ooh, there's a sweet, oh, not a berry, what is that? It's not an apple or a pear, but sort of like a pear and an and a apricot, or not an apricot, a plum hybrid almost. Pretty interesting, still a little lighter on the nose, but definitely tropically fruit forward rather than more uh, aggressive bitterness. Pretty good aroma, let's dive in. Whoa, okay, okay. Where do I begin? Oh, let's begin with the mouthfeel first, because that was the really one thing that kind of kind of caught me off guard there. Um, highly effervescent. Highly effervescent, yet at the same time, no carbonation. Does that make sense? Uh, what I'm trying to say is that when I took that first sip, a bunch of tiny little bubbles, almost reminiscent of like a champagne, uh, just seemed to fill 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 the fill the mouth and then and then when they dissipated when they dissipated quickly it felt almost light light on its feet and flat which is kind of interesting but I need more I need to figure it out and the flavor here we're gonna get into that that's pretty damn cool so cheers everybody let's keep on drinking flavor um what is it? Ooh, again, it's really like that, that nectarine mixed with a plum, a little bit of pear going on, a little bit of pineapple in the background, a little bit of like an orange uh, pithy zestiness going on. No real mangoes or, um, or hash fruit or papaya coming off on the flavor in my opinion. A bit of like a stone fruit vibe to it, yeah. Nectarine, plum, a little bit of pear, orange, slight bits of pineapple going on. Pretty cool, pretty good indeed, but that one thing about the mouthfeel, even though it went and super heady, it is fairly carbonated. I'm gonna scratch that second point I made earlier about making it feel airy and not carbonated. We're gonna scratch that. Uh, stric stricken from the record, quite, um, quite effervescent. Let's see what the can has to say here. Cowbell Brewing Co. Kvike Pale Ale. Light beer, 4.0% ABV. 20 IBUs, again, in a very stylish black can with the Renegade logo for their Renegade series. Do we have a description? Kind of. Here we go. Tropical and light for me, uh, featuring, sorry, Kvike yeast and delicate notes from Equinot, Hull, Melon, and Mandarina Hops. Uh, Bl uh, Blythe Brewing and Distilling Incorporated, Blythe, Ontario. So Blythe Brewing and Distilling <laughs> seems to be the parent company. I don't think I've ever read Blythe Brewing and Distilling Incorporated. Kind of cool. Uh, we also have SRM. It's a seven on the SRM or color scale. Serving temp is three degrees. Celsius and glassware looks to be a tulip glass. We have not used a tulip glass, but we're gonna do with what we got. Uh, pairings, food pairings. I always love cowbell when they throw these on. Also the tasting notes, what food pairings. Avocado toast, not something I eat. Club sandwiches and chickpea salad. Thing I would eat there would be the club sandwich. Um, not a fan of chickpea salads. And avocado I think is overrated and overhyped. Fight me. Uh, tasting notes, we have peach, orange, mango, pineapple and citrus. I wasn't getting a lot of mango in there. Definitely more of that stone fruit of the peach. Which again, I'm starting to get stone fruit, starting to really try to pick it out now. Really like that. Uh, but I got the orange, pineapple and citrus. Good to go. Beautiful stuff. On the bottom, like I said, canned on, I want to say, uh, September 23rd, 2020. Um, can't really see the 09 perfectly well, but good enough to, 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 count it, uh, to count it. So, pretty cool stuff. Moving over to the website, cowbellbrewing.com. Uh, you go to the beer section and you go to the Renegade Series tab. And this is number 26, Kvike Pale Ale. Availability is a limited release. Like I said, I got it in that mix pack. Uh, I think it had three, 
full-time beers, and then two, uh, you know, limited releases from the Renegade series, one of them being the, uh, the Kvike Pale Ale. Description here, tropical and light at only 128 calories. Doesn't say what, what size, but I would assume 128 per tall can. That's, that's impressive. That is very impressive if it's 128 per tall can, because this is flavorful as all hell. I like it. Brewed with Canadian Pale Malt, Kvike Nord, which is a Nordic yeast pronounced Kvike. Never heard it pronounced Kvike. I always thought it was Kvike, but moving forward. And loaded with delicious tropical flavors from serious whirlpool and dry hopping with Econaut, Hull Melon, and Mandarina hops. By far, pretty fantastic. I definitely like this over my Kvike Pale Ale any day. The only thing I don't like so far between mine and this one is how aggressively effervescent this bad boy is. <laughs> Scrolling down in even more, you do have the exact same beer specs that are found on the can. Your uh, ABV, IBU, SRM temperature, glassware, pairings, and tasting notes, which are all the, ex all the, all the exact same as the can here. Finally, moving over to Untapped Renegade Series number 26, Kvike Pale Ale. Damn, that is, that is really good. Uh, has been given a 3.55 bottle caps out of 5, and that's out of 536 ratings. Nobody say anything about this. Do they comment on the mouthfeel? Uh, simply light and refreshing pale ale, enough hoppy but watery a little. Okay, okay. Uh, keep up the good work. Anybody comment on the uh, uh, boisterous uh, effervescence? Not that I see, but I do see beers with a fair amount of head, I want to say. Yeah, seems to be around the same. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, see, all their beers in the glassware seems to be fairly heady. Um, so at least it's probably not just my can. But it, it, it is something to note. Um, yeah, but wow, holy shit. For a pale ale at 4% ABV, 20 IBUs, this packs a ton of flavor in here. Holy shit. Damn, that is good. That is really good for how light and, and the low calorie count, again, doesn't say where, the, where that 126 lands. Is it per full can? I don't, they don't do short cans uh, as a proportion, but 126 calories in this? If this is 126 calories in a tall boy can, all of your, like, you know, uh, calorie conscious beers out there, a lot of them, you're getting blown out of the water. You're getting blown out of the water, buddy. Holy. And it's and it's a Kvike yeast. I don't know, something, like Kvikes, I don't know when they really stepped into the industry, um, but their, their, their gaining popularity seems to be a little, a little bit more fastly and swiftly. Um, and it's just, from what I've heard, I don't know a ton about Kvike yeast, but I do know they play a big part in how fast and how warm they can actually ferment a beer. They can cut a beer's fermentation time in half, which means more product out your door quicker, better ferment, uh, fermenter turnaround, but also the temperature, um, sort not, what's the word? Not reliances, but uh, temperature, I guess, barriers, uh, something like that, I can't find the right word, but they can ferment hotter compared to your, your typical uh, ale yeast. Yeah, Kvike's pretty good for home brewing because like, think about it. One, cuts the, it cuts the time in half so you can get beer quicker in your, in your house. But say you got a room where, you know, that's where you, that's the only place you can do fermentation or do it, keep your beer stuff. Um, and say that room is a little warmer in the summer, Kvike can really handle those, you know, high 20s, even up to mid 30 uh, degree ranges of fermentation. So it's, it's just, a, it gets people a little giddy in the industry and it's just, ooh fascinating and it's old world but it's it's a pretty badass badass section of yeast and I like it a lot so with that said guys cheers everybody on the final sip let's get ready to rings and wrap this thing up cowbell brewing renegade series number 26 was it 26 26 Kvike pale ale I gotta say the nose, 
quite nice. A little, a little light, maybe it's just the glass where I have here at the moment, but a little light in my opinion, but the flavors are quite spectacular. What are you showing? You're showing mangoes? I'm getting more like a nectar, uh, nectarine plum stone fruit kind of thing with a nice little bit of pineapple and some citrusy notes. Pretty damn good. Looks great, tastes great. Uh, the, the, the carbonation on here, the effervescence of the beer is fairly high for the style in my opinion. I don't know if it was meant to be like that or something maybe happened during the brewing process. But that's just something I noted, I've noticed with my can. Not a bad thing by any means, but just different uh, per se. Not what I was expecting. But for you know a low ABV beer, packs a bunch of flavor in there. And, and for the low calorie count, holy shit, if it's 126, and believe me, if it's 126 for this tall boy can, and you really, you know, you want to watch your weight, but you don't want to drink shit beer like Coors Organic, or Michelob Ultra, or Skinny Man's Pint Ale, I don't know, uh, uh, the Kvike Pale Ale, yeah, if you can get your hands on it, buy a ton, because it's, uh, ooh, she a beauty indeed. Kvike Pale Ale? Cowbell Brewing gets a solid 8.2 out of 10 for me. Holy jeez, this is good. And as for presentation, I love Cowbell's can designs, to be honest. They're not the greatest in, 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 in appealing look, in my opinion, but I still do love them. But the black on the very minimalistic can design, oh my lord, I'm sorry, Cowbell. You, uh, It's simple, but damn, it is bold. Really do love that. All the information you want is more or less here. Very short, sweet description. Um, ABV, IBU, SRM, serving temp, glassware, food pairings and tasting notes. Great, 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 great stuff. And on the bottom, clearly labeled canned on date. Fantastic. Website throws in the extra bit of uh, information with a nice description, giving you a little bit of a you know, a uh, detailed list of malts and hops that are used in here. Not Maybe not the whole thing, but a generous amount of information. And then throwing on the beer specs as well, just for shits and giggles and for information. By far a fantastic can design. Presentation gets a solid, ooh, gets a solid nine out of 10 for me. Before I leave you guys, if you have any comments, questions, or beers you wanna review in the future, you can leave all that information down in the comment box below. If you want to go ahead and like this video or subscribe to me, Mate Bruski, we greatly appreciate it as well. And with all that said, that's going to do it for me, Mate Bruski, and like I always say, crack a beer and enjoy. Cheers. So how heady can this Kvike Pale Ale get? We're going to find out. But goddamn, it's fan-freaking-tastic. I strive for this kind of professionalism. Oh shit, oh shit, don't go over.